Now in this video, we want to look at using the linear equation, linear equations that we looked at in the previous video and applying that to um, a real world scenario. So here I have a bar graph and it's representing uh, years along the x-axis or along the bottom and then each one of these bars are the percentage of never married either males or females. So if I went through and I collected some data and I said, okay, in 1980, 20.9% of the females had not been married. And I believe this is, yeah, this is for um, females between the ages of 25 to 29. So the bar graph here is one way for us to be able to represent the information that we're looking at. Here we have another way of representing the information that we were looking at. So we can, we can create what they've done here, it's already been done for you, is some sort of um, scatter plot for females that are in blue and males that are in red. So if I wanted to let zero be the number of years after 1980 and along the x-axis, and the percentage of those not married along the y-axis, then coming over here and kind of referring to the, um, the bar graph that we had, if we talk about females, so at, if zero is the number of years after 1980 and 20.9 is the percent, then this point here that I have highlighted is the x-y coordinate representing this information here. So this point would be zero, 20.9. We have our x value, we moved uh, in the x direction and the y direction, and here's our point there. So we're going to talk about, a, uh, look at a question together dealing with the men. And it, you can see here that there's one, two, three, four points listed on my graph. And because I have points listed on the graph, I can create and come up with an equation that models what, um, what my graph is doing, what the data is doing. Again, this point here, which is represented by the ordered pair 1045.2, that is this number here, because 1990 is 10 years after 1980 and the percent would be 45.2. So this is 10 years after 1980 and it's 45.2. And the same thing, we have this point over here for the males. Okay, so hopefully you understand what it is that we are looking at between the bar graph and the plot over here. Now the question that we are being asked to find is, I want to use the red line for the men to develop a model for the percentage of never married American males ages 25 to 29. And to do that, I'm going to use the two points that are shown here. Now anytime we're going to take two points and come up with a line or the equation of a line that models it, we have all those choices for potential equations to use. Well because I'm given points, then just by even saying that out loud, it ought to indicate to you, you need to start thinking that because I am using points, I want to then use the point slope formula. Now what was the point slope formula? The point slope formula said y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Within the point slope formula, I need to find and use one point that's going to give me both the x and the y value there and then I'm going also going to use if I'm not given already I gotta figure out what the slope is. Now how do we do that? Okay so so far we are given two points up here. I already know that I can pick one of the two points to plug into this x y value but what do I do about the slope? I'm not given and told what the slope is of the line that is up here. So I can calculate that using the slope formula. So the slope, which is going to go into my formula here, comes from y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, that's the difference in these two points. So we're going to subtract the y values, and I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'm going to subtract the two y values that are shown there and they are 51.7 
minus 45.2, and I'm going to divide that by the difference in the x values, 20 minus 10. Now don't get too hung up on y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. All you're doing is taking the difference in the y values, dividing that by the difference in the x values. And as long as I take the difference in the same order, we're all good. So if I start with the second point for the y's, then I need to start for the second point on the x's. So down here, I took the y value of the second point, subtracted the y value of the first. Here in the denominator, I took the x value of the second point and subtracted the x value of the first. So when I do that calculation, I am going to get 6.5 over 10. Now in general, when you're doing some sort of real world modeling, we don't leave our slope as this. We go ahead and find out what the decimal representation of that is. And it's 0 0.65 when I do it on the calculator. So, so far what I have found is the slope using these two points is 0.65 and I'm going to plug that back into my equation, my formula back here. So let's go ahead and let's construct our uh, point slope form of our equation. We start out with y minus, and we get to choose. Remember, these blue highlights here represent the x and the y coordinate of either of my points that I see up here. And I'm just going to choose the first one. I'm going to choose to use the x and the y coordinates from this point, 10 and 45.2. So I'm going to use the point represented by 10 and 45.2. That came directly off of that chart above. So y minus the y value of my uh, point, so that's 45.2, is equal to the slope, 0 0.65, times x minus the x coordinate of my point, uh, which is 10. So this 10 is this x coordinate over here. This 45.2 is the y1 coordinate right there. And then of course the slope that's in my formula is given from what we calculated here. So this represents the point slope form of, of the data that we're modeling above. Now the second part of my question asks me to take that point slope form and now change it into the slope intercept form. In other words, we basically take it from here and we kind of clean it up. So let's do that down here. I'm going to move my equation down. And what we want to look at, we're going to take this equation and we're going to kind of clean it up. We're going to put it into the slope intercept form. To do that, I am going to distribute and get rid of my parentheses. Now remember, when I distribute this number here, it's multiplied into both of those terms on the inside of the parentheses. So we have y minus 45.2 is equal to 0.65x minus 6.5 when I multiply this number times that. Now I'm going to add 45.2 to the right-hand side, and I find out that y is equal to 0.65 5x plus 38.7 when I add it. And this right here, y equals the slope times x plus 38.7 is the slope intercept form. Remember, this is the slope and this is the intercept. It asks me though to take it and write it in function notation, which means I just simply rewrite it with an f of x at the front. So f of x is equal to 0.65x plus 38.7. So that is the equation that is modeling the line that passes through these two points or that represents this equation up here. The last thing that I'm asked to do then is, okay, well now that I came up with a, an equation that models the data I'm looking at, can you predict what the, um, how many, can you predict the percent of never married, Ameri never married American males in the year 2015? So we're going to use 
this function here to predict the, the percentage of never ma married American males in 2015. Now that's kind of important, the 2015. Remember that our data that um, X is years and it's years after 1980. So what I want to do then is I want to take, because I'm interested in, well, what's the percentage of males after or in 2015? So I'm going to take 2015 and subtract it from 19 A or subtract 1980 because I need to know, well, how many years is 2015 after 1980? When I subtract that, I find out that that's 35 years after 1980. So the 35 years is now X, and that's what I'm going to plug into my model up here. So F of 35 is 0.65 times the 35 plus 38.7. When I calculate that out, I find out that it is 61.45. Remember, this is the percent of males after 1980. So it would be 61.45% of the males in 2015 would be unmarried. And that's how we would go about using the point slope formula to model the data given.